Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Chapter 11. This is Lesson 1, Angles and Fractional Parts of a Circle. Our essential question for tonight is how can you relate angles and fractional parts of a circle? Go ahead and take a moment and write this essential question down at the top of your notes. How can you relate angles and fractional parts of a circle? Now here are two very important vocabulary words I want you to master. The first one is called clockwise. Clockwise is the direction the hands move on a clock. Counterclockwise is the direction the hands move opposite from the way the hands move on a clock. For example, whenever you look at a clock, the hands move clockwise. They go in a circle clockwise. However, if a shape is going counterclockwise, that would be the opposite direction that the hands move on a clock. It goes left, not right. So clockwise goes right, counterclockwise moves left. It's going backwards. You can relate fractions and angles to the hands of a clock. Let's take a look at this example. As you can see, this is going clockwise because notice the way the arrow is turning, it's going clockwise direction. Therefore, I know that the hands are turning clockwise. But I want to know what type of a turn that the hands had made. Well, I know that this clock is divided into 12 equal parts. And as you can see, I have three of my 12 parts shaded in. Therefore, I would say my fraction would be 3 twelfths. Now, I know that that is not simplified, but I can simplify 3 twelfths. I know if I divide my numerator and my denominator by the greatest common factor, which would be 3, I would have 1 fourth. So 3 twelfths is the same thing as 1 fourth. Now, let's take a look at my clock because my clock can be divided into four equal parts. Do you see how one of the four parts is shaded in? That's because the hands made a one-fourth turn clockwise. Now let's take a look at the second clock. It says 30 minutes time has elapsed. And notice how the hands are going in a clockwise direction again because my arrow is going in the directions of the hands of a clock. So this little red arrow tells me I'm looking in a clockwise direction. And I know 30 minutes time has elapsed. Well, I know that 30 minutes is the same thing as one, two, three, four, five, six twelfths. Now I know six twelfths can be simplified to one half because 6 divided by 6 is 1 and 12 divided by 6 is 2. Now if you look at my clock, you can see that 1 half is shaded in. That's because the hands made a 1 half turn clockwise. Now we will be talking about the how many degrees that equals in lesson 2, but let's just go ahead and learn that 1 half turn equals the same thing as a straight line and we know that a straight line equals 180 degrees if you're looking at a circle. Let's go back to this first clock. Remember we talked about right angles last chapter and we talked about how a right angle also equals 90 degrees because when you add up the four parts of a circle you would have 90, 180, 270, and 360. So I can also say that the hands of the clock made a 90 degrees turn clockwise. And on the second clock, I could say that the hands made a 180 degree turn clockwise. So let's do the same thing with this clock. As you can see, it's going in a clockwise direction. We know 45 minutes has elapsed because we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Now the minutes hand makes a what type of a turn clockwise? Well, I know that I have 9 twelfths shaded in. 
Now if I were to simplify this fraction, I would divide my numerator and my denominator by the greatest common factor, which is three, and therefore this clock has made a three-fourths turn clockwise. Nine-twelfths <clears throat> is equivalent to three-fourths. And let's look at my clock again. As you can see, if I divide this into four equal parts, do you see how three of the four parts is shaded in equally? Now, I'm gonna give you a challenge. How many degrees would this be? I know I'm jumping ahead to lesson two, but you guys are so smart you can handle it. Remember how each right angle equals 90 degrees? So I have 90, 180, and another 90 degrees. Did you say 270 degrees turn clockwise? You were right. Let's take a look over here at the last clock. As you can see, this has made a full turn. Starting at the 12, it's gone all the way around so that 12 twelves is shaded in. 12 twelves we know equals one whole. Therefore, I would say that this has made one full turn clockwise. Because if I were to divide this clock into four equal parts, do you see how four fourths is shaded in and four fourths does equal one whole? So it's made one full turn clockwise. So let's look at these next four examples. Your job is this. Tell what fraction of the circle the shaded angle represents. Here's the bonus. Do you know how many degrees it's worth? Go ahead, pause the video, and I want you to write your answer down for one, two, three, and four. Okay, here's what you should have had. For number one, you should have said that the fraction of the circle that's shaded in is one half. For number two, you should have said one fourth. For number three, you should have said three-fourths, and for number four, you should have said one whole. Now, my bonus was, do you know how many degrees it's worth? Well, if you would look back at your other slides on this video, you would know that if this was divided into four right angles, you can see you have 90 degrees is shaded in, plus 90 degrees, which would equal 180 degrees. Let's look at number two. If this is divided into fourths, I see that I have one fourth shaded in, which is equivalent to 90 degrees because it does make a right angle. Now let's look at number three. Divided into four equal parts again, I see the part that's shaded in would be 90 degrees plus another 90 degrees equals 180, which equals one half. Let's add one more 90 degrees to that to equal 3 fourths. So you should have said 270 degrees for your bonus. And last but not least, this final one for your full circle, you should have divided it into fourths. You can see that 90 plus 90 plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees equals a full 360 degrees because it's a full circle. So it is rotated 360 degrees. I hope you got those four right. Let's go to some more practice. Now this last slide before your homework question is this. You want to tell whether the angle of the circle shows a one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths, or one full turn clockwise or counterclockwise. Now remember what I told you. If you're going this direction in the way of a clock, it's called clockwise. However, if you go towards the left, it's going to be counterclockwise. Now, your job is to tell me whether it turned one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths, or one full turn. And go ahead and tell me how many degrees it turned as well. Go ahead and pause your video, write your answers to these four questions. All right, welcome back. For this first one, you should have said that the arrow or the angle is showing a counterclockwise direction. Do you see how it's going backwards? So the first thing you should have said is it's counterclockwise. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down, counterclockwise. Now you should say how many, how many, um, what type of a turn it made. And as I can see, if I were to divide this into four parts, I can see that it made a one-fourth turn counterclockwise. One-fourth turn also equals 90 degrees. Hope you did great on that one. Now let's look at number two. 
as you can see, it's rotating this direction. See where the arrow is going? It's starting here, going all the way around to back again, and it's going in the clockwise direction. So you should have said clockwise for number two. And how many degrees did it turn? You should have said a full 360 degrees. And what type of a turn? It was one full turn. Now let's look at number three. As you can see, my direction starts here and it's going to go clockwise. See how it's going the, the way the hands of a clock would move? It's going in this direction. So you should have said clockwise. And what type of a turn? I could see that it's going halfway around the circle. So this would be called a half turn. How many degrees is a half turn? Well, if I were to divide this into four parts, I would have 90 degrees plus 90 degrees equals 180 degrees turn clockwise, which was a half turn. And last but not least, let's look at this fourth one. It starts right here and it's going counterclockwise. It's going backwards. So you should have said for this final one, you should have said counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Now, what type? How many did it, like what type of a turn did it make? This was a little trickier. You need to divide it into four parts and just watch right here. It went, I'm going to use a different color so you can see. It went one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths. So you should have said it made a three-fourths turn counterclockwise. Now, how many degrees is a three-fourths? Well, we learned it on the last video page, it was 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus a third 90 degrees equals 270 degrees turn counterclockwise, which is a three-fourths turn. So here are your three homework questions. Number one, it's a higher order thinking question. It says, Susan watched the game from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Describe the turn the minute hand made. Now this is going to be clock one, which is where she started, and then the minute hand turned, and it landed right here. So I want you to describe the turn that the minute hand made. Was it clockwise, counterclockwise, and what type of a turn was it? Look at number two. What fraction of the circle does this shaded angle represent? And for your bonus, how many degrees is it? And for number three, tell whether the angle shows a one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths, or one full turn, clockwise or counterclockwise. After you have finished answering those three questions, please don't forget, you need to assess yourself in the bottom corner of your notes. I will be checking that when I come around and look to see how you feel about the turns. And if you feel like you're a novice or an apprentice, go ahead, if you have the time tonight, rewatch the video. If not, we will be practicing these turns tomorrow in class so you can become a practitioner or an expert. Again, here are the three questions. Take your time, work them out. Don't forget to assess yourself. Bring your packet tomorrow so we can go over these three questions and do lots of fun practice to get really good at our turns. See you tomorrow. Have a great night.